Hi, I'm Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that focuses on musicians, authors, and interesting people. We like to say we're making a difference one artist at a time. So sit back, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. On the podcast today is a friend of mine from Chicagoland. He's a musician, a concert promoter in Northwest Indiana and Southwest Michigan. And he's been in the studio all winter long working on some great music that you are truly going to love. And I guarantee that. Will you please welcome my friend Frank Sintich. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Rick. Thank you. Good morning. And always a pleasure. And thank you for having me on your podcast, man. I appreciate absolutely, it. Absolutely, buddy. Um, as normal, I like to start with uh, your musical roots. What, what started you on your musical journey, bud? Oh my gosh. Um, when I was about eight years old, um, my brother, my older brother, who's Silvana, who's passed away, unfortunately, but he was a player. He played guitar and I would watch him play. So I picked up his guitar. And then next thing you know, my mother and I are going to Wee Bolts <laughs> with Destiny <laughs> Green Stamps. And I bought my first guitar. I wish I still had that guitar. And then they, they bought me, my parents bought me six lessons and I got six gold stars for those six lessons. And I started playing and playing and playing. And I got into garage bands uh, when I was a teenager and I didn't. I don't know, man. It was, it's been a good journey for me. That's the first story I've heard that was uh, a guitar bought with s h green stamps. <laughs> the young people would be like, what? Yeah, What's an s h green stamp? Yeah, I remember those, too. I think I got a yes, thermos. Sir. I think yes, I got a thermos sir. at one time, which okay. I ended up breaking like weeks later. My parents were so peeved at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. What about uh, musical influence, especially uh, any influences in the Chicago area? Well, in the early days... Um, Sticks. I was a big fan of Sticks, and I had the pleasure of uh, befriending and taking guitar lessons from John Kierlewski. He was oh. the original guitar player, and he passed away in 1988, unfortunately. Mm. And he was replaced in the band by Tommy Shaw. Yeah. Uh, and he, him and I got together and uh, went to lessons, private lessons with him for a while. And uh, beyond that, I was into a lot of progressive music. I liked, I was a big fan of Yes, Genesis, of course, Rush, the, uh, <laughs> the trio. <laughs> the tr- the, tr- the trinity, holy trinity. Yeah, <laughs> um, it, it was just a good run of great of great progressive rock. Steve Howe of Yes, uh, Steve Hackett of Genesis, yeah. uh, Jeff Beck, uh, Ted Nugent. I mean, a lot of different. A lot of yeah, my favorites yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, awesome. But no, I understand that uh, you played the the Chicago club circuit for about twenty seven years, from eighty to two thousand and seven. Let's talk about some of your favorite moments during those twenty seven years. Anything stand oh out? My God. Oh my God, there's so many. I mean, I can remember the first time I was on a stage, and that was a memorable moment for me. Just to, as a kid, underage, getting into a, a bar, a club, you know, like mm-hmm. there was the rules were a little loose back in the day, you know, Rick. Uh, as a younger kid, I used to go in, the, in these bars and play in my bands. But uh, I mean, gosh, it ranged from garage band to uh, playing the circuit. I was in a really po- uh, pretty popular band in the early 80s called Chaser. We did some of our own music, but we did a lot of progressive rock. Uh, and then most recently in the early 2000s, I was in a, a, a dance band called the Hat Guys. And they're still around today. The Hat Guys. That I was like a that. really fun band. Oh, yeah. We, we didn't take ourselves seriously. We wore uh, thrift, floor, uh, thrift store clothing, uh-huh. hats and glasses, jackets. We were wired wireless. And we go into the crowd. That band was a lot of fun. That was probably the most fun I've ever had. What was the name of the, fir- what was the, name of the first band you were in? Relayer, no Black Diamond, Black Diamond. Black Diamond. All right, was that after the Kiss song? Uh-huh. Uh, Black Diamond. Was that right out yeah, of high school? Was, or uh... yes, yes, right out of high school. It was. It was a summer. It was one of the best summers of my life. Right? Mm-hmm. We were a garage band, and we we got all these. We got like six gigs that summer, like the summer of '79. Yeah, and we played all these block parties. Uh, there's a, there's a, 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 a Catholic parish on the south side called St. Bede's. And somehow we got the uh, 25th anniversary, uh, they called it Silver Fest, and we had to play the Friday night uh, spot. <laughs> we're just kids, man. We, we built our own stage out of milk crates and plywood, and those were fun days, man, as, oh. as a young kid. A lot, a lot of fun those days. Absolutely, sure. absolutely. Now, all winter long, you and a dear friend of everyone's in the local area, Lou Samaniego, have been working together on some brand new music. And uh-huh. the first song we're going to feature here is uh, something that absolutely just blew me away when I, I played it. And I was, I, all I was doing, I, w- I put it on, and I was doing something else in the room, and I'm going, is that Frank? It sounds, it sounds like Peter Gabriel. And I, I, I love Peter Gabriel. I'm going, does Peter Gabriel have new music? This is just absolutely incredible. I love the song. Tell us the backstory on what could never have been. 
You're, you're too kind. You're too kind. Thank you. Um, the back, it's kind of my song. It's a personal song. It's a journey. Last few years of my life, having have some hardships uh, with the, some of the venues I produced at and, um, uh, you know, a breakup. And what can never have been is basically uh, being removed from that for so many months and months and realizing that there was no way I'd ever go back there. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a positive song. It's about change and um, personal growth. And uh, the song turned out really well. Uh, you know, it's a funny story. Lou had a 12 string guitar in the studio. So I picked it up and I started noodling on it and I wrote the chord progression for that song in like 30 seconds. Jeez. And then as soon as I come up with an idea, I, I grab my phone, I, I throw it on my voice recorder. Literally, I went home that night and wrote the song. Who's doing the synths and and, uh, and the keys on that? Well, Lou. <laughs> Lou, Lou's doing it? So it's just you and Lou? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. That, well, I'm the guitar player and the vocalist and the writer, but Lou is Lou's a bassist and he's Jeez. a phenomenal keyboard player. Yeah. He's got a lot of good music sense, music theory. Yes, and he, he does. Is, uh, he's, you know, I'll go, hey, Lou, play this. La, 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 la. And he plays it. So let's give a, little, give a little love right now. Lou Samaniego, we're sending you love, bud. <laughs> Brother Lou, man, wherever you are, I'm sure, I'm sure he's just sipping his first cup of coffee right now. Yeah. Getting ready for the, hey, for you, the and, <laughs> you, you and Chris need to get on my show, so book a date soon, okay? I'll get, I'll get those boys on. <laughs> I'll get them on. Sure. Okay, gang, here is one you are going to love. You're probably going to hit repeat on this one a couple of times. What could never have been from my buddy Frank Sintich right now, the Someone You Should Know podcast. <laughs>
what could never have been. Absolutely love that song. That is called What Could Never Have Been from Frank Sintich, my buddy. And we're going to have more of Frank's music coming up in a bit. But before we do, I want to tell you, thank you so very much for tuning in to the Someone You Should Know podcast. You can find us on the web at someoneyoushouldknowpodcast.com. There you're going to find our recent news, our archive of past episodes, and a whole lot more. And if you happen to be visiting for the first time, hey, leave us a review. We'd like to know what you think of the show. Now, according to Buzzsprout, the service that shares our content to all of these streaming platforms, which I think there's like 19 streaming platforms now. We are so blessed to be heard in over 2,000 cities and over 85 countries around the world. I want to name a couple. Thanks thanks for folks listening in in Staten Island, New York, Fishers, Indiana, Almogordo, New Mexico, and Friesland in the Netherlands. The Someone You Should Know podcast heard wherever quality streaming audio is available. We're talking to my buddy Frank Sintich from the Chicago area. He and I rubbed elbows and worked together a couple of times here. But Frank, I understand now that uh, you are actually co-writing songs for an upcoming musical, which is in pre-production called The Weathermen. Tell us about this. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, So a friend of mine, Chuck Heber, he is a meteorologist, and he spent some time at WNDU in South Bend as the weekend anchor. Mm -hmm. And he just, he was, okay, Chuck is a real estate broker. He did commercial real estate back in the day and does a lot of high-end stuff now, but he dropped out of that and went to meteorology school. He um, got his degree. He interned under Tom Skilly in Chicago, the weatherman, the weatherman. And uh, so he's, he fancies himself as a vocalist. Okay. Mm-hmm. And him and I would get together and drink wine on the porch and play our, my guitar. And he would sing and I'd sing with him. So he tells me he's writing a musical about weather. I'm like, okay, sure. And he said, I'd like to help. I'd like you to help me write the music. I said, sure. Whatever you want. So this, this is five, six, seven years ago, Rick. Mm-hmm. So it manifests into, uh, uh, he sends me, he sends me, a, a, a this melody sends me the lyrics. I picked up my guitar. First song I wrote in 20 years, it came out of me like in 10 minutes and then 20 songs later. Wow. Okay. So a year ago we were out in LA we visited with a few music producers, uh, they do strictly, they do plays, mm-hmm. uh, can't name them right now, but they're pretty prominent people. They gave us some advice. We spent three hours with them, uh, outside on a beautiful rooftop hotel in West Hollywood. I felt like a baller, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a good meeting. And so since then we've had to do a little bit of rewriting and he's writing the play, but I'm kind of standing pat right now. Cause I wrote all the music for the songs. They're all recorded. Uh, I use uh, some great musicians to help me do this, uh, great producer, a great bass player, a friend of mine, who's a, a great player in the Chicago area named Mike McEwen. And uh, it's right now, it, it is, we're, we're just waiting for Chuck to, to finish a few more things on the script. And then we are going to start the pitch and God bless. See what happens. All right. Well, if, if, if when that thing actually winds up going to uh, Broadway and such, we'll have you back on the show to, to promote it for sure. Now, I got an idea for a song in case you haven't done it. A song titled, I can be wrong most of the time and still keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hit, Rick. That's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> now, earlier we were talking about the fact that you have been working uh, over the last year with uh, with our dear friend Lou Samaniego, and uh, the music is out now. We're enjoying a lot of that, but I want to back up to when you and I, I think it was like one of the first times we actually met, you were telling me about a song that you had written for someone suffering with uh, with autism, and the song is called Say Everything, and how, is it, how did the song come to be, bud? So I was approached by a dear friend who has a daughter who has a um, syndrome called Duke 15 Q and it is a autoimmune disease and she's nonverbal. And I was asked to write a song for the foundation of the Alliance, excuse me, uh-huh. because when I would get together with her and her daughter and her husband, I'd pick up his guitar, he had an acoustic guitar and I'd play the guitar and Riley would be so affected by it. She would, she would touch me and uh, just, you could tell she was really into it. And so I wrote a song and, I th- and they were, they asked me to write a song. So I thought, what can I write about? And I thought, you know, I'm going to write about the perspective of the person who suffers from this nonverbal okay. uh, situation. And they told me a quick story. They, they have these, they have these iPods, iPads, excuse me. And they're able to communicate. These folks can communicate on these iPads. And 
the husband and wife were talking and they were trying to come up with a yes or no answer to something. And they looked at the iPad and Riley had pressed yes. So she can hear, uh-huh. feel and, and understand, but, but, but can't, yeah, she convey, yeah. but can't worry. Uh, and the, uh, what happens in her life, is she'll go to the doctor's office. Mm-hmm. Now she's an adult now. Yeah. She's 21 years old. Go to the doctor's office. The parents are there and the doctor's not even, not even looking at the, her at all. Hey, I'm over here. I'm in the room. I can hear you. I can feel you. So that's kind of the perspective of the song is it's from their it's from their perspective uh-huh. of wanting to be heard and spoken to and felt. All right. A song for everyone shrouded in the veil of autism. Say everything right now from my buddy Frank Sintich right now on the Someone You Should Know podcast. Look at me. I can hear you. Hey, I'm not dumb. Over here, I can see you, I feel so numb, if I could tell you something, there's much I would say, I'm inside, in my skin, today, tomorrow, day after day. I wish I could dance, I wish I could sing, I wish I could scream and say everything. Do you see, I'm a person, sometimes I cry. Still you stare, more than a moment, I don't know why. I can feel, I have emotions, all of the time, can't escape, I'm trapped inside me, minutes, hours, year after year, I wish I could dance, I wish I could sing, I wish I could scream, and say everything, say everything, say everything, say everything, everything, say everything, say everything, say everything, everything, look at me, I can hear you, hey I'm not dumb, over here, see you, I feel so numb, I wish I could dance, I wish I could sing, I wish I could scream and say everything, say everything, say everything, say everything, everything, say everything. Great song right there. Say everything right there from today's podcast guest, Frank Sintich. I like the song, Frank, and I like the vibe on it. As a matter of fact, we're going to put a link in there. If anyone wants to make a contribution to the Autism Society, uh, we'll go ahead and include that there, too. Before I knew Frank as a musician, we'd work together. He is also a concert promoter in the local area. And when I was working at Rock 106.5, we worked hand in hand on quite a few shows. Frank, uh, let's talk about uh, Frank Show Productions and what's you know what the business is up. Some of the uh, just you just recently had Echoes of Pompeii back in January in in Laporte. Let's talk about some of the venues you work with, some of the bands you've worked with, and what might be on the horizon. Well, I spent six years at the Acorn Theater in Three Oaks, Michigan, a very cool, funky, yeah, it's great, small great, venue. great, great venue, yeah, great venue. Rick, I've produced some amazing shows there. Uh, just to name a few. Graham Nash was probably my number one. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, Graham Nash came to the Acorn, the Smithereens, the Grassroots, uh, Dan Navarro, who wrote "We Belong," that Pat Benatar made mm-hmm. famous. 
um, and on and on. And I had uh, Bob Marley's Whalers. Uh-huh. There's an original member in that band, uh, Junior Marvin, who, uh, oh my God, the stories. Well, that's one of the best things about doing this, Rick, is meeting the artists. Yeah. Meeting their, sometimes their crew have stories that'll blow your mind about the road, right? Uh-huh. You talk about road stories. Oh my God. Right. So, uh, that lasted for about six years. And then I moved over to LaPorte Civic and I've done some shows there. I produced Tom, uh, uh, um, Rich, excuse me, uh, Jen, Jen Peterick. Thank you. You helped me with that show. Cornerstones of Rock. Great yep. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cornerstones of Rock. That was a great show. And I look forward to doing more in the future there as well. It, it's, it's, a, it's a nice outlet for me to still be connected to the artists in the area and actually across the country. And it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do, man. It's great. I love yeah, absolutely. it. Absolutely. It's great, great memories. And that's what I love doing this show. I mean, the number of people I've met through the years and I'm somewhere upside of 6,000 interviews now. And I, I'm, I'm so blessed to be able to have done this for my life. You were talking a few minutes ago about road stories. You were talking about the member from Bob Marley's Whalers and, and that had a great road story. How about you? Uh, the next feature is called Tales from the Road. Those are those infamous road stories where things didn't go as planned. Think Spinal Tap as we go into this one, Frank. All right. Um, there's so many. I mean, so many. But I'll tell this one. It's clean. It's clean. Okay. <clears throat> so, all right. Back in the early 80s, this band was called Chaser. And it was five of us. And... We had booked a show. We had, we had a couple of agents working for us. And we, we we booked a show in Twin Lakes, Wisconsin, at a club called the Edgewater Nightclub, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and so the five of us got in. Uh, Ron, oh, the lead singer of that band, coincidentally, is Ronnie Platt, who was the lead singer of Kansas now. He replaced Steve Walsh oh. about eight years ago. That's someone you should know, too, Rick. Yeah. Maybe I'll hook you up with Ronnie. That would be great. That would be great. I, I can get him for you. All right. No, no, no worries. Um, So we had two roadies who brought our gear in the, in the van. And we had a production company, uh, Casey audio, who was alive and while playing, uh, promoting his company, shout out to Carl in the Chicago land area. He does PA and lights. And so back in the day, then you had to bring your own production. Right. Today, most clubs have their house production. Okay. Which is great. So it was, a, it was in January of 1984. Okay. And it was about six degrees out. So we get in Ronnie's car. He had a really nice, this big boat of a car. I can't remember what it was, but it was very luxurious. And we drove like rock stars to the club. We get there about 630. The show starts at eight. We're doing it. We, you know, we, we assume we're going to walk in. Our gear's all set up. Here's our guitars playing. Nobody's there. Road crew's not there. No production. I walk into this place. Now, now let me set the stage for this room, Rick. It was, uh, it was two rooms. They, they had the rock room with, with the stage and a bar. And they had another room with foosball tables, pool tables, arcade, another bar. And it was set, uh, partitioned off by a garage door. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Exactly. Oh, that'll so, definitely keep the sound out for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the warmth. So the garage door's closed. We get there. The heat isn't on in that room. By this time, the, the sound check should be ready to go. The owner was livid. Where are you guys? We're, we're freaking out. This is pr- prior to cell phones. So 15 minutes later, the production guy shows up, Carl, with, and his sidekick, his, uh, I'll tell you his nickname, Fomer, and I'll leave it at that. Oh, no. <laughs> so they, they, what happened? Where were you guys? Uh, the truck broke down. And luckily they got it started. And so now we're helping them bring all this gear. In. It's freezing cold, no stage gear. Where are our roadies? They show up like literally a half hour before showtime. Oh my. We got lost. Uh, the driver of that vehicle, I'm going to say back then or today, he'd be on the spectrum. Yeah. And it was absolutely on the spectrum. And uh, so we got our gear on stage. We threw on our stage clothes. We had no sound check. They opened the door to let the people in. It's freezing. You can see your breath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Literally. So we had no sound check and we needed a sound check because there's a lot of intricacies in this band with the keyboards and the guitars and the bass pedals and the four part harmonies and all the drums with the, it was, it was a big, big setup of, of, of stage there, Rick. Mm-hmm. And we start and we sound awful. <laughs> My <laughs> fingers are frozen and I can't play these. Cl- it was just awful. Nobody stayed. And, and after the first set, it's still cold in this room. So I told Paul Fulmer, I said, Paul, take the gels off the lights. Now we got white lights on us. Back in the day, uh, in the 80s, the talking heads had no gel. They would use white lights. Yeah. 
Because you guys look like the talking heads, but you know what? I was warm. <laughs> yeah, thank God for that. And that's just it. As far as if you if you if you have no feeling in your fingers, you're not exactly sure if you're on the right notes. You know, the absolute worst show of my life. Uh, owner pissed. Never invited us back, and. Um, we live to tell uh, another story. There you go. That's what the fun thing is about these tales from the roads yeah. is, is is you live that you, you drink, you have yourself a, a, a bottle of wine or a, a couple of beers and you sit back and go, do you remember that gig in three Oaks, Michigan? <laughs> oh, man. Funny stuff, man. <laughs> hey Frank, how about links to your socials? What's uh, what would be the best way for people to find out what's on tap as far as concerts coming to the local area or when you are going to be releasing more material? Sure. Well, I have a Facebook page called Off Frank Show Productions. That's my Facebook page. You can find out about all their shows uh, on that. Then I have a personal Facebook page, Frank Sintich. And then my music is streaming on every single platform. There's okay. about 19, you said. Overseas, there's a platform called Deezer. I'm on Deezer. I'm That's on true. iTunes, Apple, Spotify, Pandora. Um, just type in my name, man. Yeah. You'll find me if you want to see me or hear. Yeah. Is there a way to purchase your, your music? You can, you, yes, you can go on Amazon. Amazon. Purchase, I'll, download music on Amazon. I'll, I'll include the link to that because I, you don't make any money off the streams. And yes, I do. Point zero 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 three cents. <laughs> Spotify is a billion dollar a year yeah. enterprise. And musicians and artists get paid jack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Another song we're going to feature to close this show. This one's called Changes. We're all going through changes, especially you know here in 2024. What? Uh, how did this song become part of your repertoire, bud? You know, that song started off as a love song called Miss You. And I played it for some friends and they're like, no, the riff is good. That riff is cool. The riff was actually given to me by a friend of mine. And I was playing this riff and I love the riff that you'll hear it. And I changed it to uh, my buddy, Mark Moore. He's a producer. He's a music producer. He lives up in Michigan. He gave me the idea for changes, turn pages. And that was it. I wrote this new, entirely new song. I, I, I sped up the tempo a little bit and it became this really cool rock song. It kind of reminds me of Foo Fighters a little bit. Uh, and it, again, it's just about, it's an uplifting song about facing the inevitable, which right. is change. You know, change happens to all of us in life. Whether you like and, it or not. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly, man. Just embrace it. And it's a very positive song. And uh, it's one of my favorites, actually. I That's love that very song. Very good. Well, we're closing the show with that. Frank, gosh, it's always great to talk with you. And um, it's it's been too long since we, we last hooked up. So let's get together, maybe have a couple of beers and, and, uh, and hang together. What do you say? I would love that, Rick. Thank you again so much for having me on. I had a blast.
Eastern Time on the DJ Hall of Fame. John Records, Land Record. I've been rewound. Rewound Radio. Hi, Rick Anthony here. I had a chance to interview some great folks on my Someone You Should Know podcast heard around the world. One of the most interesting folks I've spoken with has been John Records, Land Anchor. Well, here's some good news. John will be featured on the Rewound Radio DJ Hall of Fame the last two weekends of March. You will hear unscoped recordings of John from Michigan, Philadelphia, Toronto, Cleveland, and of course, the Big 89, WLS, and other stations in Chicago. As part of the fun, we'll include some segments from my recent podcast with John, just to give some additional context to the special. Don't miss it on Rewound Radio, where it's not how old it is, it's how good it is. Part 2 is coming up this Saturday at noon Eastern Time. Rewound Radio, DJ Hall. 